Yes Show, episode number 13. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today will be Daniel Anthony. Hello, everypony. So, Daniel, how are you? Well, I'm on the verge of a meltdown. Had a lot of assignments this week. But of course, I'll make time for the show, which I love so much. And joining us will be Tashirina. Hello. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Fine, thank you. What about you? Uh, I'm alright. I'm just recovering from a bit of a cold that I have. I'm pretty much the same with Daniel on the front of like assignments and stuff. Time management skills. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see the assignment. Well, my assignment was to make the show notes using Google Docs, which we are using right now. Mission accomplished. <laughs> and God, is it so difficult to get used to it? Well, it it's, it's a culture shock. I mean, uh, probably you. Correct me if I'm wrong. You've probably been using Microsoft Office all your life. Uh, basically, yes. Oh uh, well, I've been the one who's jumping around. I've switched from Microsoft Office to. Lotus Symphony to Open Office and then now to Google Docs. Okay, it's not that difficult really, but it's just the getting used to it part. I mean, I'm so used to Office that making a big change like this is going to take time for me. Yeah, it will take time, and it of course has less features. Microsoft Office still has the biggest palette, but for people like me, I don't have PowerPoint on my computer, so I have to use Google Docs. So let's start off the show this week with a bit of housekeeping and. To start off, recently the crew of the MBS show, uh, Norman and I, we did a birthday shout out to Sabrina Alberghetti, aka Sipsi. If you're wondering who she is, she's the storyboard artist working on MLP FIM. And guess what was so awesome about it, Norman? Why don't you tell everyone? Well, the most awesome part is that she replied to our shout out, which is cool. Yay! Fangirl moment. <laughs> I know, I had that moment when I saw it. I was like, Sipsi, wait a minute, who's this? Sabrina? It is legit, and when they walked to the gym, I was like, oh my god! Dun, 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 dun. And the best part is, I'm on DeviantArt, and I posted it there first on her front page or her wall, and she said, thanks. And oh my god, that was so awesome when she replied. <laughs> I just got myself a DeviantArt account this week, and I'm still trying to work out how it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, it it's... reminds me of Friendster. It's. Um, I wouldn't say that really. It's more for art. But the social networking format of DeviantArt is a bit complex. And last week, most of the MBS show crew attended the 8th Malaysian Brony Society meetup. And we had a chance to meet with almost all of the guests that had appeared on the show. During the meetup, who was there? Um, we had Hazi, who is the administrator and founder for the Malaysian Brony Society. And we also Whoa. had... Sonder, is it? Fang. We had Vincent Fang. He was there. Yeah, we got PCP or Doggy999. And who else was there? I forgot. Because you know me and my memory. Oh, well, I also have a derpy memory. And especially all these assignments in my head. They're really, really clouding me up. But the cool thing is that only one of us that went there was so boss that he only came in with a t-shirt, short pants, and slippers. Guess who Don't that forget. pony is? Don't forget the black balloon. Yes, the black balloon too. I'm guessing you know who that pony is. Actually, I don't know. Who is he? I don't know. I mean, he was a guest, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on. In today's news topic, Daniel Ingram loves the fans. Yay! I love, love you too, Daniel. <laughs> During the weekend, Daniel Ingram posted a little message on his Facebook fan page. He posted a shout-out to the Brony community saying that we are the best fans in the world. And Tash, why don't you read what he wrote? Sure. Um, so I'm going to try and do this in a different voice. Um, My Little Pony fans are the best fans in the world. It's been an awesome second year, and now that the season is over, I can't wait to sit back and enjoy all your amazing fan-made creations pouring in. Thank you all for being such a great support base and sharing your enthusiasm. You inspire me to keep doing my utmost to keep pushing the boundaries and write the best songs I can for you all. Tash? That was yeah. awesome. You're going to give me a heart attack. Really? <laughs> My oh. heart. <laughs> Glad to hear that. So okay. cute. Ah, my heart. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> uh, links can be found in the show notes. So, <laughs> Daniel Ingram loves the bronies. Oh, yes, he does. Yeah, why not? We have talented musicians to make him love the bronies. Anyway, um, 
can we say anything more about this really i mean there's nothing more to say especially because you know in um, the article where rolling stone interviewed daniel ingram they already said that when he realized that there was this totally new fan base it came as a, such a huge challenge for him as he was thinking oh gosh i've got to write songs that appeal to little girls as well as guys so how am i going to do this and that's what he talked about and he certainly achieved something that i think even most musicians today can't really say they've done because very seldom you know if you give a little girl an mp3 player and you look into an ipod of some of a brony and you rarely rarely find the same song in both devices ah uh, yes well the only comparison i can make is that in an mp3 player of a little girl you'll find mainstream artists but in the mp3 player of a brony you'll find brony artists and, and um you brony know playlist basically uh, yeah. <laughs> yep anyway um daniel why don't you take the next one all right so Lauren Fast talks about her childhood and pitching a show for girls. Recently, the Los Angeles Weekly they published an article on Lauren Fast, the creator of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. And in the article, Lauren Fast she talks about her life growing up as a girl in a house full of boys, and she also talks about how marketing for girls may lead to a financial failure. Links can be found in the show notes. Now, this I find very interesting because when I currently in a university, I'm doing a research project on bronies. I even managed to get the attention of my lecturer when I told them when I told him somebody had actually modded Skyrim for it because he's into games. And uh I I recently been looking through a lot of articles on this and people have been saying that you know marketing for girls in the past has actually been proven to attract cross viewership meaning guys also tend to watch it. Oh, okay. Not as much as marketing for boys girls don't tend to watch boy things but boys tend to watch girl things. Oh, oh that's okay. really interesting. No um but on top of that when you said about girls don't really watch boy things um to be honest there's actually a small percentage of girls that do watch boy things um have you heard about the girl fan base for transformers uh not really but i would understand if there is but we all we all can under- see that you know there's definitely a large amount of boys watching girl things rather than girls watching boy things well to be honest it's mostly about um how do i put this gently um it's mostly about how boys don't really care what other people think of their fandom when they're in a group but girls do think about themselves in um how do i touch help me here because i'm derping with the lines but you know what i mean right touch um uh, sort of i guess it's more of like the attitude of guys being able to just enjoy what they want whereas girls as a whole social stigma attached to liking things that boys like is that what you're trying to say yes it's mostly that and there's always this stigma of um competition between um fans where boys don't really have that much competition between oh, them okay. unless they're provoked but girls have that competition between each other when they're not provoked you know it's a girl thing yeah It's a cool thing. Oh yeah, I sh- I should know. Um, what is interesting to me about this is like, um, have you guys seen that video about the little girl who makes a comment about the whole marketing thing of, you know, why is girls stuff all in pink and why are the guys stuff in blue? When she wants like the guy things, why can't they market things for people, you know, neutrally instead of going by the color coding? Well, it's basically what we're born with really. It comes back from basically when a baby is born, the first thing that parents usually buy for those babies is clothes that are color coded to them. Yeah, that's very true. And even recently, <clears throat> I've been looking at, you know, I do balloon decoration on the side and uh I recently looked around a new catalog for a different set of balloons in US and yeah. light blue balloons have been, you know, when you look at the description is it Oh we'll, sorry, we we'll start with light pink balloons and then they say this is one for the girls is for your slumber parties and joy and then suddenly there is a bag of blue balloons and then the description is we didn't forget the boys too. That's always the thing though. But fun fact, it's like it's actually interesting to note that um pink was originally meant for guys because oh. because it was based on the color red and red is like all about vitality that sort of thing. So mm. pink was meant for guys whereas blue was meant for girls because it symbolizes um innocence and fertility and that sort of thing as well. Oh, huh, look okay, at this for for me. I did not know that. Mhm. So it's like over time it's more of like perceptions of gender change and it sort of got accommodated to 
human needs instead, like as we move on with like social times and things like that. Okay, I can understand. Anyway, okay. we've been on this topic for a while. Let's move on to the next topic. So, Tash, why don't you take this one? Ooh, I like this topic. Um, so, moving on, we have giant pony wallpaper found in Germany. Ooh. Um, so, over in Germany, the website Amazon.de and, okay, I don't know how to pronounce this. Um, Kleberfieber. Kleberfieber. Kleberfieber.de are selling giant pony wallpapers. Oh, yes. Ponify everything. Um, various designs can be bought from both sites and all of the designs are good <laughs> and our host Norman Sanzo would not mind sticking up posters of Princess Luna on his wall yep that's um, true links can be found in the show notes as well as image links you um, all really but... really need to see this because it's awesome it's so amazing well who wouldn't want like ponies up on their wall I know like, really <laughs> okay, um, here's the thing. This wallpaper is not small. It's really big. I'll be posting some pictures on the show notes and my god, one of the wallpaper is as large as a kid. It's like a portal to Equestria. Indeed. I look at the pinky one, I'm like, oh my god, it's so big. And it even fits. Uh, it, I mean, so if somebody were to do the whole pinky breaking the fourth wall thing with the circle and stuff, okay, that would be really cool. Yeah. Oh. God, that is massive. Take me to Equestria now. Oh, and the other one is, um, if you look, there's a picture of a baby with a block and his background is um, ponies. I'm seeing that right now. I'm like, oh my God. Uh, okay, my want... parents would probably freak out if I try and put this in my room, but that is amazing. You want to know how much is it? Please, yes, please. Do share. 200 euros. Whoa. But it fills up the whole wall. There's that Ponyville scene one, isn't it? Yep. That wow. is a portal to Equestria. 200 euros gets you to Equestria. <laughs> Shut yeah, up and take my money. money walking into the wall every day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the next topic. Hasbro, Divionet and White Duff. I just don't know what went wrong. There has been a lot of rumours and speculation about Hasbro's cis and deceased claim over White Dove's plushies. Wanting to clarify all the misinformation that is going around, White Dove has posted an update on the situation on her DeviantArt journal. What she has stated on her journal was, I never received a cease and desist. A cease and desist is an official document from Hasbro. I never received anything from Hasbro. I was never contacted by Hasbro. Hasbro contacted DeviantArt and DeviantArt asked me to remove my commission price only. I removed the Hasbro names of my own free will. I was not asked to do that. I was not asked to stop making pony plushies. Hasbro and DeviantArt has been very good about this. No legal action was taken against me. More information can be found in the show notes. So, um, this is a sensitive topic. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Many debates happening on this. A real wild goose chase, I mean, if you ask me. True indeed, but it all came from EQD first. So, mm. well, I think it blew up on Twitter first, if I'm not mistaken. Like, if there are Twitter bronies out there, from what I remember, this like really blew up on Twitter and it started going around. Yeah, I, like I said, rumor and speculations. If people don't know what's really going on, they're just going to make up things that sounds logical. Mm. Yeah, like Gabby Gums. Uh, not really. <laughs> she just exploits the truth. Well, not really. When she got further in and she couldn't find anything to write, she had to start writing other things that didn't make sense just be- just to satisfy her job and, you know, keep her anonymity. Yeah, but the whole thing with Hasbro and Sis and Desist really is... It sounds official, really. I mean, if you really think about it, Hasbro has been really nice to the fans. Yeah, they have. They have been quite accommodating considering most of the things that are actually fan-made and they do have a hold on like copyright and things like that. So Yeah, but they're not you know, they're not with an iron grip, so you know they let us do what do they they believe is you know, within boundaries. Well, at the same time I guess it's because they don't want to get on the bad side of bronies as well, considering we make up quite a bit of the fan base. No, we'll say ninety percent. No. I'm... So it's like being diplomatic, I guess. 
No, I wouldn't really say that really. I mean, Hasbro has the right to do so because they own the copyright for that product. If Hasbro says to this one person, you are not allowed to sell something, that person has to basically agree to Hasbro's term or be sued in court. Trademark has been a very weird thing and do not copy, do not confuse trademark and copyright because copyright will remain copyright until the copyright license lapses but trademarks, you need to fight for them. Mm, true that. I mean, uh, most of Hasbro stuff are copyright. I, I got no idea. I'm not a lawyer. but Not exactly. Remember in Zen's episode, they only bear copyright on Applejack's name. The rest of the characters, however, bear trademarks. Anyway, let's move on to the next topic because... This is trading on thin ice. Well, ultimately, I guess with this topic, it's just a good thing that they've been accommodating about this and there hasn't been any bad blood that has been spilled. Like, no blood is shed. So all is good again, isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, we could say we're in neutral grounds with Hasbro, really. And just arriving, our guest, Ian Xia. Hello. How are you, Ian? Good, good. Why were you late? Ah, uh, I was actually at a friend's party. Partying at a pinky pie? Style. Yeah. Before we get into the guest time, we have to ask you the four important questions. So, question number one is, who's your favorite pony? Twilight Sparkle. Oh, okay. Um, why Twilight? <laughs> because adorable. <laughs> okay. I'll accept I that. I agree with that. <laughs> adorable. I didn't know that's a word. It is now. It's exclusive to Twilight. <laughs> yeah. It needs to be a word. And it needs to be in the dictionary. <laughs> adorable. Description Twilight Sparkle. Exactly. <laughs> so is there. Just a, if you look up a dorkable in the dictionary, once it's there, it will just have a picture of Twilight. <laughs> oh, okay, that's cool. What's your favorite episode? Oh man, this question. Favorite episode? I like Lesson Zero because it's like, oh, going crazy. But, Twilight going um, crazy, okay. I think, I think my favorite episode is the finale of season two. Out of all, I think it will seriously be that. Because it made me... I had so many feels. Oh. All of, I couldn't hold the men, those... I couldn't hold all those feels. There was just too many. Funny, because in the last episode, I was just saying, nobody has said that, you know, season 2 finale was their favourite yet. It, it's my favourite. It has to be my favourite. There's no... I mean, the whole storyline, the... The songs... I mean, every single one of those songs can... Oh, it really just hits me <laughs> right where I live. Right? Yeah. Such good songs. Yep. I really like all of those songs. All, yeah. all. How many of them are there? Three. Three, yeah. Yeah. BBBFF, This Day Aria, and Love Is In Blue. Love Is In Blue made me cry. The This Day Aria made me cry. This Day Aria and still tears. gives me goosebumps. <laughs> and tears. Okay, anyway, um, how did you become a fan of the show? Okay, this story. Well, um, it started, I think, in, um, Late September of 2010, oh no, late October, late October, sorry, because it started 10th of October 2010. Late October, um, my brother was watching it on his computer and I turned over and I saw it and it was like so colourful and I was like, bro, what's that? And he's like, it's My Little Pony. I'm like, are you serious? You're watching My Little Pony? And it's like, yeah, it's okay, it's pretty good. And I'm like, okay, I'll go check it out. And I watched episode one, I was like, okay, not too bad. And I watched episode two, I was like, okay. Then I watched Ticketmaster and it was all over. <laughs> really? Ticketmaster sold the show for me and I just watched it till the end. I remember the first live stream I saw, I think, was over a barrel. So, um, is your little brother a uh, brony? Um, I would say half. He watches the show but he doesn't participate in like the online stuff. He doesn't come for any meetups then? Yeah, he doesn't. He's not really into the whole fan base, but he and he thinks the show is all right. What do your families and friends think about your love for the show? My family is basically indifferent, and my friends, most of them that are not into the show, just usually when they see me like wearing a shirt or they see my phone or they uh, if or if I reference the show or talk about it, they just give a small groan and say, "Oh, you." <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so I think they're also indifferent. They're not judging me or anything, uh, but they're just indifferent about it, I guess. Oh, okay, no problem then. Well, with that out of the way, um, let's move into guest time. Well, um, this is interesting format. Anyway, um, in today's guest time, we have Ian Chow. He's one of the administrators for the Malaysian Burning Society, and he is also a MLP role player on Twitter. Am I right? Yep, play my OC final score, and I also play uh, Pipsqueak. 
from the show. Okay, um, before we start with the normal questions, um, well, basically all the normal questions are not related to that, but let's ask a few things about the whole MLP roleplay thing. Alright. So, um, how did you get involved with that? Uh, it's a funny question, a funny story actually. I was on Twitter with my normal account, and uh, I think because I had my display picture as my OC, I got notified of a follower I should follow, MLP Twilight. So I saw, and I was like, MLP So I clicked on her and I saw that there was a lot of other ponies, all uh, MLP underscore, Rainbow Dash, MLP underscore, Applejack. So I was like, what is this? So I went on, and I was like looking around, and then I found out it was a, a role-playing group where you make a MLP underscore your name and you role-play. So I went to their wiki, and I just took a look around, and I read up, and I was following the accounts for a while. I didn't really role play straight away. I was just trying to find out uh, what they did, how they role played, what was being done, um, what was allowed, what wasn't allowed, uh, what people enjoyed, what people didn't enjoy. So I just was watching it for a while, and then I got in. I started just just uh, slowly trying to get in. Uh, obviously, the first people uh, I went to try and connect with were the main six. But uh, as time goes went on, I found out that it's not really about the main six. It's more about OCs and the background ponies. Oh. So it's kind of like MLP. Uh, MLP, the main show, is for the main six, where you see them doing all the adventures. And Twitter ponies, we kind of do more of the adventures of the back... Background ponies. Yeah, like how Lyra is like, obsessed with uh, her. Lyra, Bon Bon, um, the Flower Trio, um, Pipsqueak, the CMC... Uh, the Phillies, Phillies and Colts in the school, uh, and OCs, of course. Ah, okay, that's interesting. So, um, you said there was a wiki page. Um, what's the address? Uh, twitterponies.wikia.com So, it lists out all the characters that has been taken? Uh, yeah, it has a list of, of ponies that have been... Uh, so, you can go to characters. There's um, show characters, OCs, inactives, main six... Uh, Is there a page for, like, you know, vacant ponies? Not really. Uh, well, if you go to um, show characters, the main six are already taken. So if you go to show characters, you can pretty much see those that are already taken. They will usually make a um, key page for them. So I have one for my OC. I don't know if I have one for Pipsqueak. No. Or uh, do I? Yeah, I do. So is it easy to get into the whole Twitter role-playing thing? It's easy to get in. What's difficult is getting the followers. Ah. So the main thing is you need to have followers, people who follow you and you follow them back. Um, the way you do that is you basically just need to understand that mobbing the main six, as in straight away trying to interact with Applejack or Twilight or RD or any of the main six, is not the way to go. Oh, okay. You will just basically... Um, Make yourself look like you just want to basically brown nose your way into the thing. Oh. So what is advised if you want to get in is to just um, follow a few accounts first of all. Uh, so when you create your account, you go and search up for all the MLP characters. Follow a few of them, then start RPing. Maybe find one that you like, preferably not a main six. But you find one that you like and you just go and try and talk to them. Uh, just try and say, hello, I'm new to Ponyville, or if you're from Cloudsdale, or Pantalot, or Stalingrad, or Las Pegasus, or Baltimore, or wherever you want your OC or your pony to be from, you just can come in and talk to them. Is there any situation that the group puts itself in, like an event? Uh, sometimes there are events. Usually it's um, given on a, as an announcement by one of the main six, because pretty much everyone follows the main six. If there's a... Um, a whole like community wide event is going to happen, like uh, winter wrap up, or maybe uh, you know a the winter the grand galloping gala, or maybe a town dance in Ponyville. Then the mains will actually make an announcement, and usually they make a wiki page, so you can go and find that on the wiki page and get information. So all these style of things is usually just handled over there. Uh, but people can give their ideas as well, uh, DM one of the main six, because usually that's the best way to get the information out, or just, you know, post it or see to your followers that, yeah, I'm going to, my character's going to have this because of this, you guys want to come, everyone's invited, or just have your OC basically go around and try and invite people, but 
most of the time it's hard to get a lot of people to come because oh. of time zones and because of real life and because of work. Oh, okay. So you shouldn't let it get you depressed if like you wanted Pinkie Pie to come but she couldn't because the player wasn't available to come in. Uh, sometimes if they can't actually RP, they just say that their character was there, had a fun time and all that. <laughs> oh, okay. Because sometimes, you know, real life people can't really RP the whole thing out. So they just say like, Pinkie Pie went to the party and had a great time having fun with all the other ponies there and, you know, breaking it down and stuff like that. It's happened before. And it's, it's good because it shows that the player wanted their character to be there, but because of like other reasons, they couldn't actually be there. So that sort of thing. Do you have adventures there? Like Yeah, there are adventures that go on. You can do stuff like, uh, well, I did with Pip Squeak. He went out on an adventure with Scootaloo. They, they built their own little raft and floated off to an island where they went treasure hunting and fought a rock crab and all sorts of silly things. But Twin Ponies is not a drama or a serious RP. It's mainly just for laughs and for door. Ah. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Just being adorable sort of thing. Because when you so, said the Pip Squeak and Scootaloo thing went, built a raft and went um, for an adventure, it sounded like um, one of those fanfics that I saw. Something like that. Basically, you RP... If you, It's kind of when you RP, you kind of are writing fanfic in oh. a way. I mean, it's not like a story. It's like you interact with the other character and you just play off of them. Oh. So you can make a f- it, it can be considered as writing a fanfic if someone follows the whole um, the whole arc where the ponies are interacting the whole arc it can be considered like writing fanfic but it's a lot shorter and in and, and real time oh. so sometimes things don't really work out as the way you wanted it to whereas with a fanfic you can write it any way you want and you can have anything happen because you're the author uh-huh. but with this you have like more than one person uh, involved. So things can get a bit out of hand sometimes. But most of the time, uh, if you want to do an adventure, usually the players will meet up beforehand on DMs or something and discuss it before actually going on the adventure itself so that people aren't left in the dark as to what's going on. So you said you had your own OC, right? His name is Final Score, right? Yes, Final Score. Could you describe Final Score to us? He's based on a football player in real life, based on um, a player from Manchester United. If you were in real life, I took a few uh, characteristics and traits from some of the Manchester United players and put it into him. Uh, and he plays for Manchester United in, um, in uh, Equestria. He was a new signing this season, but throughout the season, he proved his worth and became captain. And he ended the season as captain, but unfortunately, they didn't win the the, the, the equestrian Premier League. <laughs> uh, so, because I try and I try and uh, what I did this uh, this season was uh, I followed the games in real life and kind of played it um, in the RP. So, if United won, I would play it as final scores, team winning. If they lost, then I played it as their team losing. So, in the end, uh, because United didn't win the season, neither did uh, Manchester United in uh, the RP. But next season, I might be doing something different because there's another character whose player is very talented, MLP underscore George. And he kind of did up a whole full table, like a fake table, um, following... He made up all his own hoofball teams and they just, um, they just, uh, they just did it. Uh, he just did the whole thing himself and he made it all up. So hopefully next season will be I would be following that. I'm uh-huh. using that and uh, we will see how things go from there. And uh, just a, a short question from me. What actually motivates you to stay on in the role play and, you know, actively participate? Honestly, it's the people that you meet. It's the relationships you build between the characters that makes you want to stay on. Uh, you start interacting with a certain character more than another uh, certain characters, rather, more than others. And you kind of build your own main six, in a way. You know, it may not be six, it may be five, it may be more. It's, you build the relationships between your characters. So, if your character just drops out, it doesn't only affect you, it affects, you know, other people. So, it kind of gives you an incentive to stay on. Because you can make more friends across the world. I have friends in the US, I have friends in Ecuador in the UK, in Germany, all over the place. So moving on to the next set of questions, 
Ian, what kind of musical instrument do you play besides the guitar? Uh, I am exclusively guitar and bass. Ah. So I don't, I don't really play the piano, I don't play the drums. I just play guitar and the bass. This question comes from our new crew, News Pony. He asks, when is that song you said you were working on going to be finished? Oh, oh, that song. Um, well, I guess, I guess, um, I could, uh, I could do that as well as my cover of uh, "Long Way from Equestria" together sometime in the near future. So all of the listeners can uh, look for that sometime in the near future. So now moving on from that, we'll go into the questions from the Facebook members. Um, this one comes in from, this is Hazi. Of course, everyone knows who Hazi is. Um, first one is, why is Twilight Sparkle the best pony to you, I guess? Is the adorable factor more than anything um, else, Ian? It's because, yes, yeah, one of them is that she's so adorable. Like, seriously, the way that they animated her, her face, like, the expressions that she has sometimes, they're just, uh, my heart, my poor heart. And she's that kind of character where I kind of like people like that in real life already. So kind of when I saw her and when I was like watching the show, she kind of just stood out as one of my favorite characters all straight away from the start. And like I said, when I watched um, Ticketmaster, I was hooked. And that is basically a Twilight episode. So I think, yeah, because of um, who the character is, kind of just brought me into uh, just kind of why I like her. Um, so how did you react to Twilight when she was in that one episode called Lesson, Lesson Zero? Zero? Honestly, I didn't really like her going crazy, but it makes sense her being so uh, pretty OCD and fastidious about everything that she does and so absorbed in her work and making sure everything goes right. It does make sense that she would go slightly crazy over it, but the references, like the whole Gollum scene where she talks to herself in the puddle, that was pretty good. So it was good for the character. It just showed that Twilight also um, has her faults and has her, her own problems that she needs to overcome. In the end, it benefited all the main six because they all realized that Twilight sometimes needs help as well, besides just them. Moving on to the next question, Mofes asks, give us one trait that you dislike about bronies in the brony fandom. That is a good question. This is uh, the topic of the brony fandom with me is uh, quite... I have a lot to say about the different uh, aspects of um, of the fan base of bronyism as it has been uh, as it started being called but one aspect that I dislike it's the people who take it over the extreme like um, we are not a majority so we are basic we are actually quite a small group compared to a lot of other fandoms like the anime fandom, for example, or the Sonic fandom as another example. So we are a new, um, a new fandom. We're a new, a relatively new group, but we are growing at a rapid pace. The thing that I do not like about the Brony fandom is when people take it to the extreme and start to do things that embarrass the rest of the fandom or make us look bad. And when I say take it to extreme, an example would be going to a public place as a group and drawing attention to yourself using the fandom. For example, singing a song from the show really loud or watching an episode in a very public place and just, you know, disregarding everyone else. I mean, it's good to be proud that you're a brony. I'm proud that I'm a brony. I have no shame at all. But you have to realize that if you take things to the extreme, people will look down upon you or will judge you, you know? Yeah, okay, I can understand. So, um, on to the next question from Mofes. If Malaysia did its own brony con, would you support such an idea? Yes. Okay, um... I would, I would help organize it. Okay, if um... If I could. Well, remember my promise, 30 committed bronies and tailors and it's gonna happen. <laughs> well, actually, there's more to it. And sorry, um, okay, 
which is support such an idea? And if so, what would you do to help such an event come to come true? I think I already said I would help uh, organize it if I could. But for something as big as a Malaysian BronyCon to happen, I think we have enough members so that we can do it. A Malaysian BronyCon is definitely possible. So yeah, we can start small. You know, we can just get everyone into one place. We've had a few decent meetups. But the thing about a convention is that you have panels or you will have uh, guests or you will have um, presentations, that sort of thing. So the thing about what makes a, a, a BronyCon, for example, the actual BronyCon in New York so special is that not only do you get bronies from all across the world gathering in one place, you also get people from that actually worked on the show to actually come up and answer questions, do panels, do uh, do um, signatures, autograph sessions, and uh, you'll get bronies who have contributed to the fandom, musical bronies, for example, Mando Pony, Acoustic Brony, all these guys, uh, and the artists as well, John Yoseko and all of these guys, they all will go to BronyCon and you can all meet up and you can all see what they do, you can meet them in person and stuff. So that, I think, is the main draw of BronyCon, more than just... Uh, being able to meet bronies from around the world. So for a Malaysian brony con, it can happen, but my main concern would be the attractions to it, besides just meeting everyone in one place. Mm, okay, okay, understandable. Um, I have a suggestion, if you don't mind. Since we're going to have a booth at Comic Fiesta, why don't we try to make it our own little brony con? Well, we can. I mean, I've talked to, like, Vincent and on. He said that he wants to try and do commissions. And we can sell, like, we can, we're planning to do shirts. We're planning to do uh, patches, car stickers, and maybe plushies. So, you know, we can, we can sell our stuff there. If we have a booth, you know, we can just make it our own. And we can advertise uh, the, the show and uh, fans of My Little Pony and stuff like that. So it is it is possible that we can use our booth in Comic Fiesta this year to actually try and get people more into the fandom and so on. Oh, okay. Moving on to the next question. Tash? Actually, no, but you skipped a question from Hazi just now. <laughs> really? Oh. Yes. How could Hazi. you, woman? How could um. you? <laughs> yeah. For Hazi question. I just yeah. don't know what went wrong. It's okay, we're all derping. <laughs> <laughs> so should I just ask that question first, maybe? Yeah, please. Yes, please. Yeah, so Hazi had a second question, and it was, um, what are your thoughts about Tara Strong teasing the bronies with her constant tweets, <laughs> basically uh, being twilight The brony queen. The uh, <laughs> self-proclaimed brony queen. I think it's just a bit of fun. I think she's just playing around. But I do think that some part of her really does like... Um, the, the whole Brony fandom. I think it's because, maybe because it's the biggest fandom that she's a part of. Because she has been in a lot of stuff. She's been in Fairly Odd Parents. She's been in Avatar. I mean, not Avatar, sorry. She's been in uh, Teen Titans. She was Raven and uh, all of that um, stuff. Mm. And she was in Drawn Together. Don't forget Powerpuff Girls. More adult-based cartoon. But I think... Bronyism, oh uh, yeah, pop of those as well, it's bubbles. But I think that her role as Twilight Sparkle has really gotten uh, everyone to notice, well, a lot of people to notice her in terms of her, her popularity. Because of the Brony um, fandom, she's gotten a lot more popular. So I think she's just she's just reaching out to all of that and embracing it, which is a pretty good thing. Go no argument there. I mean, the only one reason why I have Twitter is just so I can look at Twilight. I mean, I can look at Tara Strong's tweets. She's even call her Twilight now. She's how much she's done to your brain. You actually think Tara Strong in real life is Twilight. T-S, T-S, it fits. It's canon! It's canon! <laughs> so, okay, uh, anyway, um, Daniel, why don't you ask the next question from the next person? Okay, the last question for the night comes from Calvin Chiu. So he asks, how stressful is it being an admin for such a large group? Is there standard protocol for dealing with rule, break rule breakers? Uh, before we ask, you know, um, what's the hit count for MBS at the moment? MBS membership currently stands 
at 332 members mm-hmm. currently on MBS, wow. uh, the Malaysian Brony Society. Yeah, well, it is a big group and it does get hectic. That There are times when people go overboard. But the problems with being an admin is that is deciding how to deal with all the things that happen. Um, there have been incidents in the past that I'm sure a lot of people, if not everyone, is aware of, those who are in the group, where things were probably not handled as well as they should be or could have been. So the problems that face me and the rest of us as admins is that we can't be too harsh because this is a group where Bronyism in a, in a, is like, we, we all stand by the whole love and tolerance thing. So we have to accept people for who they are. But there also comes a point when those people that we have accepted and are tolerating do not show the same acceptance and tolerance and understanding towards other members in the group. For example, posting something that's offensive to someone else or picking on someone or excessively... Uh, trolling, as it's called, excessively towards a certain person, that's when things get a bit tough, when you have to decide how do you handle it. And I have to say that I have handled it badly in the past a few times, and I have to obviously apologize to the people who have been affected. Lately, I have a pretty different outlook on things and how I handle stuff. Most of the time, what I would do is I would just say a gentle reminder to uh, the people in the in the post or the thread or whatever you want to call it, I'll just say like, hey guys, it's going a bit too far, so on and so forth. And if they still go further, then, you know, I'll just try and talk to them like over PMs or something and tell them, you know, this was not so good, so on and so forth. It's a big group, so you have to watch a lot of, there's a lot of people that will post, but usually you'll see a select group, you know, a few, it's not such a big group. We have a lot of members, but we don't have a lot of actives. And then there are a few people who are really active that are always constantly posting. So after a while, you will start to notice who does what, how they operate, what are the stuff they post, what are the things they say, what their personalities are like. So you start to understand who they are and you know uh, what they do or their modus operandi, so to speak. And you can be prepared in a way because after, after so long, you start to know the people and you, you start understanding how they're like. So... You build up a relationship with them as well, like you talk to them and you, and all that. So it becomes easier to actually uh, take care of the group in that sense because you know the person, you can talk to them, you know, they know uh, sometimes they do this and sometimes they do that. So things get easier over time, I would say. But sometimes, yeah, things get out of hand and handling that is where the true difficulty is in being an admin you do it wrong people call you a tyrant people say you're power hungry you know all that sort of things and you know it's not it's not easy to be an admin for sure you know because sometimes the decisions you make can cause you to be seen in a certain light when the only reason why and when your whole the whole time you've been you, you do these things is because you want the best for the group as a whole for everyone involved You know, not just a small group here, but you want the best for everyone. So we found that the one one of the ways we found to help accommodate all of this is to have multiple mini groups within the big. Like the main group is basically where people will post all their pony, like the show related stuff or group related stuff. Then you have the other subgroups which have their own reasons for existing that are there for people in the group to share other things as well, besides just, you know, stuff from the show. So that has actually worked out pretty well. Um, We haven't had any major problems. So far, things have been going okay. As an admin for a group this size, you have groups that want this to happen. You have groups that want that to happen. Uh, You have always got two sides to the coin, two opposing sides to something. And... As an admin, when you're so emotionally invested in the group, as I am with MBS, it gets very tough to call things down the middle because you already build up your preferences and your biases and stuff. So you have to learn when you need to compromise your own values for the better of the group and when you need to stand your ground. So 
it's a learning process for for me. It has been, and I have learned a lot from being an admin of this group. And hopefully, I've learned enough to help me be a better admin for the group in the in the months to and years to come. Hopefully, years. Well, that was very beautiful, Ian. But we have to move on to the next topic, and the next topic is email time. Um, in today's email, we have no pony sending us any email, which is rather disappointing. Well, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can always contact us at the MBS show at gmail dot com. You can also reach us on Twitter. I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'm at Tasha Irina. I'm at Zed Pinky, and I am at the Man United Pony. M A N U T D, the Man United Pony. And you can reach us now on the MBS Show's official Twitter account at the MBS Show. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Pretty, pretty, please. If you cannot find us, all you need to do is turn on your i device, go into iTunes, search for the MBS Show is the first result. I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Tasha Irina. I'm Daniel Anthony. And I am still Ian Chia. Well, we'll see ya. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Stay twenty percent cooler.